what I realized is that probably the, the depth of study on that that was um, necessary, uh, there had been some, some work done on that, but I felt it was really important before we come to the commissioners for this final recommendation is to get yet another impartial party to look at the data and look at it against current trends to project out for the commissioners uh, what the population might look like or probably will look like based on statistical analysis. So with that, um, I have today uh, Scott Moore, and Scott is from Integris. Integris is a uh, architectural firm that builds jails. And I'll let him tell, tell you a little bit about himself, but uh, Scott has worked with Maxwell Construction, but we hired him independently to do this evaluation. And he's gonna present to you some information uh, that's gonna help probably Hopefully, it will help you in your decision because there'll be actual factual information here. Thank you. I'm Scott Moore. I'm with Integris Architecture. Um, we've been around for 50 some years and probably done over 300 correctional projects in probably 27 states in the United States, Canada, Hawaii, Alaska. So, a couple weeks ago, I got a call from Terry and was asked to take a look at um, inmate population projections for your jail through 2035 to see what option between the 144 bed, 176, or 208 bed option you would use. Um, to give you a little background on um, population projections, they're difficult to narrow down because there's so many factors involved. Um, the, the county population, the demographics, the national and regional crime trends, along with arrest rates and court dockets and warrants served and unserved and, and uh, alternative incarceration programs, along with location and possibly a casino that may have some effect on, on the jail size. So. Um, so I looked at four um, historical data analysis on your county, um, your county population, your corrections offenders, your uh, any of the Department of Corrections admissions from Dearborn County, and the average daily population of the Dearborn County Jail. First is your population, and this is a. This shows your population for the U.S. Census, census from uh, 1940 through 2010. Um, the reason I'm um, looking at population is population mirrors your jail population. So if your population were to increase 15% over a certain amount of time, statistically, the jail population would also increase almost that exact same percentage over that same amount of time. So, so this is through 2010, which showed that you were at uh, and then flip to the next one. Um, then this is the projection, and this was done by the IU, uh, IU Kelly School of Business and uh, Stats Indiana that makes projections out through 20, 2040, which shows a 12%, 12.63% projection increase from today. So theoretically, you would need to take that 12.63% into account over the next 30 years in your jail size, that would increase proportionately. The next thing I looked at was the community corrections. And this is data from 2002 to 2012. Uh, the darker yellow shows home detention, and the lighter yellow shows work release. Um, as you can see, the home detention has increased uh, 1,070% the last 10 years, which basically is, has been really felt for the fact that your jail was already, already completely full and you don't have any place to put them, so they are putting as many as they can on home detention. Um, home detention and work release are a good thing, but... Um, I'm looking at that, Chris, is that because of severity of sentencing? Is what? 
Is that because of the severity of the sentencing for, for non-violent crimes? <coughs> just out of curiosity, is that part of it? For community corrections? For the in-house car, for the, yeah, the tall line there. Well, I mean, I, I think it's because they didn't have any place to put them, so they're trying to monitor them in some respect instead of just letting them go and hoping they show up for, for trial. Um, the, the, these are huge, huge numbers that, that you can see the increase, um, and uh, and it's really because the because your jail was already full and you don't have any place to put them. The next one. I also looked at the commissions from 2005 to 2011 from the Indiana Department of Corrections. The dark blue line is the, the male inmates, and the light blue line is the female inmates. So as you can see, in 2011, there was 253 inmates sent to the, the DOC. The reason I look at these numbers is, one, these are, these are more violent offenders. They typically have multiple felonies against them. They have multiple years once they are sentenced. But the other factor that you need to take a look at is most of these people will probably be in, in your jail for at least six months from when they're arrested until the trial date because of court dockets and extensions and everything else. Because if they're going to jail for a long time, they drag it out as long as they possibly can. Um, you go to the next. 